Okay, five common mistakes why business fail. Let's talk about those things. The thing is, there are a lot of reasons why a business can fail. But I recently read an article where they talk about business, why they fail. And there are some things in the article that I'll be like, yeah, really? So we're going to talk about those things here in this video. So the first thing that the article is saying is not having an effective business plan. Yeah. When you start something, you need to have a plan. But I remember someone said, hey, you need to have a plan. You need to execute the plan and you need to expect that it goes wrong and then improvise. So four rules. Yes, you need to have a plan. But what's an effective plan? I don't know. Do you know? Let's say you create a business. Do you know what an effective plan is? Do you know if your plan is going to work or not? No, you don't. You just need to execute it. You need to expect things to go wrong. And when they go wrong, you need to improvise. That's how life is. Not everything will go according to your plan. And they say this is the reason why business fails. They don't have an effective plan. I don't think that's the reason. There are a lot of reasons why business uh, fail, but most of the time it's not the plan. Because when you don't have an effective plan, you can do things based on what the demands are. I see some people, they don't have an effective plan, but they still have a successful business. So the first reason, not worth it. So let's look at the second reason. Second reason is not putting the customer first. Um, that's BS. Yes, you need to understand your customer, but you see a lot of people at the beginning, they give the customer discount. Um, doesn't work like that because if you give someone today a discount, they're going to come tomorrow for the same price. You are not making any profit out of it. So what I'm trying to say is discount can be good, but if you need to give discount, trade something for it. I'm going to give you a discount, but I'm going to ask something in return because then the value of the product or the service will be still here. And understanding your customer doesn't mean you need to please your customer. I really don't like that because most time customers, they have a problem and you are solving it. So they have a problem. You are not, you are solving it. Let's say they need some product. That's their problem. You have the product, you sell it. If they have the money or not, it's not your problem. I understand that you need to sell it. Yes, but they need to buy it. And if your product solves their problem, good. And what I'm trying to say is, yes, there are some situations you need to See if you satisfy the customer, but not always. What important is, in my opinion, you need to solve the problem of your customer. If you do not solve the problem of your customer, there will be no trust. And otherwise, you, it's, you will be like the same as uh, like scammers. You are trying to push a product to your customer. Most people don't like that. And do you like that when someone do it with you? No. Treat other people the same thing, uh, the same way they treat you. So I really don't like the second reason. Third reason. Not hiring the right people. Also BS. How do you know if someone is the right people or not? Some, let's say someone, has, they have good intention. They want to help your company at the beginning. They have uh, good papers. Everything is fine. But because something happened in their life, there's a turning point. They change. Does it mean you, uh, you hire not the correct people? What do you think? So what I'm trying to say is, when you hire someone, there are a couple of things that you need to do in order to hire uh, correct people, but it doesn't mean they will all be the right people. People change. Your company change. Your customer change. It doesn't mean you still have the right people. You are dreaming of the right team, yes, but people change. People have things to do in their life. So think about it for a second. I don't think this is the correct reason to not hiring the correct people. That that's the reason why business fail. That's a BS. Okay. Doing it all by yourself. Um, there are some people, they have a lot of knowledge and there are a lot of things. They can do it by themselves. And there are some people, they think, hey, I need to create a team. But seriously, how can you create a team when there is... Nobody around you that have the same interest. You see a lot of people, they want to start out. The first thing that they have on their mind is, I need to create a team. That's BS. Because when you start out, you need to start small. You can start small by doing most of the thing yourself because you're learning. 
while you learn in the process, you can create more things. If you hire a team, you're gonna be, you need to, you need to look how 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 would I put this? Um, let's say you hire a team and the person they have their own life, and uh, the problem with that is is sometimes they do not give you the right work, and this happens a lot. People hire someone or people um, create a team, but the the people in the team they have other interests. If there is no common interest, it's not going to work. Even if there is common interest, something change in people's life. So I can understand most time people do things by themselves at the beginning. Yes. And they will make mistakes. From those mistakes, they will learn. So I don't, do to, I don't agree with this. Most time you can do things by yourself. If you have the feeling you cannot do it anymore by yourself, then you hire people. And when you hire someone, you need to make sure that if the person, if the person change, you need to hire someone else. Don't hang out with the same people if they are hurting your business. Don't do that. Okay, and the last last one, lack of flexibility. So what they are saying is they are people are not um, people don't want to change. That's what they're saying in this article. I'm not going to name the article because uh, um, a lot of reason, but let's keep it with one. Um, I don't want to give them attention. But lack, lack of flexibility, think about it for a second. If you see something is not working, you're gonna adjust. If you don't adjust, it's a common sense that you will die. Your company will die. And most of the time, what you see is the opposite of this. There's a lot of flexibility. If people see that this product is selling much better, they're gonna focus more on that. It's common sense because you're gonna get money for it right now. But if it doesn't sell, most people drop it or they keep it going after a while, but then they drop it. It's common sense. That's something that people do because nobody wants to pay for something that doesn't work. Nobody does that. You understand what I mean? So the lack of flexibility, I think people are more flexible than you think. So when I read this article, I was like, no, that's not the real reason. There are some reasons why company fails or business fails. But most of the time, it's on the person that's steering the boat. If the boat is not functioning well, the person, the captain, is responsible for it. And if the person doesn't have the right people, or if the person can steer the boat by himself, sure, why not? That doesn't mean it's not a reason. It's a good reason for the business to fail. So if you look at these mistakes, yeah, those are five mistakes that you can name up. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And when, how they put it in this article is they put it like, hey, when you have this, this will fail. That's why I disagree with this uh, article. And that's why I need to make a video to show you that this doesn't work always like this. We are talking about the real life. You have real things going on. This is not some someone that has a business that wrote this down. And they say they have some experience with starting out from small. Maybe they are lucky. Maybe they're not. But... I don't really like this article and the arguments that they name in this article. It's it it makes them some sense for some situation, but not all of them. So I hope you guys like this video and you learned something from it. If you're new to this channel, subscribe. Seriously, I'm waiting. Did you subscribe? Thank you. See you in the next video.